What I'm gonna use today is this new Oxford Navy. I love this color. It is just absolutely so rich and just so bold. And it, it looks great with so many different decors when you wanna do something blue. And we are going to then, for this tutorial particularly, what I wanna do is show you with glaze. Cause I love glaze. With glaze, we're going to use the General Finishes Glaze in clear. And we're making the glaze color that we want with the chalk paint, the Annie Sloan chalk paint in Paris Gray. So we've got our first layer on, looks really good. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a second coat of the Oxford Navy on. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go around with a wet towel or a wet cloth and I'm just going to lightly um, bring back right at the corners and edges, especially around the legs and maybe just where this little ridge around the top of this table is. Um, just to bring back a little tiny bit of wood. Um, I just want to have the symmetry going because you can see bits of the wood under here and I lightly covered it, but it just kind of has more of an organic flow of bits of wood through it. And it will all kind of tie together when we put the glaze and the frottage together and it will just have this kind of mesh of history kind of spelling out through the whole thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a second coat on here and then we can get started on the make your own glaze with the chalk paint. We have two coats of the Oxford Navy and it looks fantastic. I'm gonna go ahead and just do a little bit of wet distressing. I'm just using standard baby wipes. Um, I'm gonna be very, very faint about it. Um, just on these spindles, gonna show up maybe just a hint of wood around some of the edges, just very sparing. naturally over time, the lifting of the leaves, where people would be sitting and their hands would always be those natural areas in which a furniture piece would wear. So 
We are going to make a mix of clear glaze and Paris gray. And we're gonna frottage on here with paper. Just regular newsprint, paper, whatever you have. Have some fun experiment. General finishes, clear glaze, four parts. So depending how much you're gonna need for your project, you're gonna to have to estimate that on your own for this. So just giving you an estimate idea, literally, it's like a tablespoon for a project this size. So I'm gonna just go with tablespoons. Um, again, these kind of measurements are really gonna depend on the size of your furniture piece. So obviously if you're gonna be doing a big armoire or you're gonna do a big cabinet, this measurement's gonna change. But just giving you an idea, don't get too fussy. You can always add a little bit more paint. You can always add a little bit more glaze, but chances are you're gonna want more glazed paint regardless of your ratio. So, continuing on. So I've made the glaze, we're ready to go. I'm just gonna use an old, kind of worn out, you can use an old chippy brush, whatever. It really doesn't matter what brush you're gonna use. It's just the glaze, you just wanna get it on there. Um, I'm gonna probably do a little bit of that cross hatch. So it's kind of X's and random. Then we're gonna go ahead and place the paper, let that sit, give it a nice crunch, and lift it off, and hopefully we're gonna have some really cool um, frottage texture. And I'm kind of really excited to see how it looks with the glaze rather than just a paint wash with chalk paint. seen the frottage videos I've done before but the main trick just plain paper even newspaper whatever you have crumple it up so you've got lots of this crinkly texture lay them flat have a handful half a dozen ready to go for the size of your project then you're just gonna lay it flat rub it down you're not gonna be too forceful but firm and then you're gonna lift it off easy peasy. I'm really liking how the glaze does the texture. Because the glaze is a medium with the paint, it's just giving that little bit more defined texture versus what just the plain water wash would do. So both are beautiful. Again, just showing you other variables of things and fun things that we're going to do with glaze. So, and I'm a particular fan of this frottage and ragging technique. I just love to make sure it's fun. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let's see how it turns out. Easy peasy. Don't fret about anything if you don't like it. It's okay. You might not like it. If you don't, just paint it again. It literally took me 30 minutes to paint this table. So have fun. Pick a small project. Go crazy. You know, step out of the box. You learn so much when you just kind of play with some variables and throw in a little bit of dramatic dimensions and you'd be surprised what you're gonna make. It's fun.
If you try this, please send me a photo. I would love to see your fraudage with glaze uh, projects. I think it would be absolutely amazing. And so I'm gonna finish the middle and then I'm gonna do a little bit throughout the legs. Not I just as... quickly wanted to mention um, if for any reason you have done a frottage and you've done a, quite a contrast similar to this, you've put a very dark color down, you've put a very light color for your frottage, no worries. And if you just feel it's too much, even though you may like it, but it's just too much, you got two ways you could play with it and have still have full control. One, you could frottage your first color, or two, use just a paint wash. Make a diluted paint wash, one to one water to paint uh, wash, and put your base down over the frottage. By doing that, you're just gonna dilute down that texture boldness, and you just wanna just back it up a little bit. So again, just wanted to give you some, you know, just in case ideas. These are things that you can always apply. That's the beauty of working with Chuck Paints is. Another quick tip, easy, just wanted to quickly mention. If you overlap your frottage um, strips and you don't like it's got some kind of brush mark streak or whatever, there's just something you don't like, just take a brush, any brush, doesn't really matter your clear glaze, go back, wipe the clear glaze on the area that you don't like or you just want to feather it in somehow or give it a little more continuity. Just put the clear glaze. Again, glaze is awesome because the clear glaze is kind of like the clear wax and it basically is going to help not just a erase it. It will erase it if, if you use a lot and just keep wiping it off, but it will help reformat the texture that you were doing. So it's just a little correction tip I wanted to put out there. So if you have that anywhere, for whatever reason, there's just something you want to correct, glaze can be a lot of fun that way. So again, it's just really nice to know all the little control tips you have with all these little details to your projects. Generally, you're not gonna have an overlap problem if you do the frottage um, sheets two or three times because it's just going to keep overlapping each other and you won't even notice it um, but sometimes i just like to do one maybe two so if you have those fine little details that you want to change again take a clean brush any brush clear glaze let it sit for a second frottage it again just even just dab it with your leftover paper that you have and away you go. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let this settle. I just want to let it dry, come back in an hour or two. So I am thinking I may go ahead and do another frottage on top of this one in Spenska Blue. It's kind of like duck egg, just a little bit more bluish. It's beautiful. And I thought it would be such a beautiful contrast to our Oxford. So 
you're gonna just have all of this funkiness coming through. <laughs> anyway, just thinking about it, we'll see how it goes. Let's let this dry and I'll be back. So I've gone ahead and I did all of the legs and the support boards of this table and it looks great. That little bit of wet distress just gives it this old um, nostalgic kind of feeling, a little bit more history. Looks good. I'm really happy with it. So I am going to go ahead and use the um, Svenska Blue just to the tabletop. So I've already made the mix. Again, the mix of making your own glaze color is four parts clear glaze, one part paint. I'm gonna use my leftover paper and even some of the paper that I originally used because the glaze is all dry anyway. I'm just gonna go around and slap that on, do another frottage right here on the top, and then um, see if there's anything else that I wanna do. If I do, I'll pop back on and let you know. Thank you. 